this video we're talking about how to use the integral test to say whether or not a series converges. And the integral test is one of our many convergence tests. In this particular problem, we've been given this series here, 1 divided by n squared plus 1. We're taking the sum of that series from n equals 1 to infinity. And what we want to do is use the integral test to say whether or not this series converges or diverges. So the integral test tells us that if a sub n, that's our series here, 1 over n squared plus 1, is positive, decreasing, and continuous. So these three points here are extremely important if our series isn't positive and or is not decreasing and or is not continuous, we can't use the integral test at all to determine convergence or divergence. We'll have to use a different test or maybe we won't be able to determine convergence at all. So we have to first make sure that this series is positive, decreasing, and continuous. If it is all three of these things, then we can move on with the integral test. And then the integral test tells us basically that the behavior of this series and the behavior of this integral, the integral of f of x from 1 to infinity, is the same, meaning that either both of these things converge or they both diverge. So in other words, it gives us something else we can evaluate to determine convergence. So we can find the integral from 1 to infinity of this function f of x, and we just set a sub n and f of x equal to one another. So we use this value here, 1 over n squared plus 1. We just switch out the variable n for the variable x. And then we would take this integral, the integral from 1 to infinity of 1 divided by x squared plus 1. We'd evaluate that integral. And then if that integral converges, we know that the original series converges. If that integral diverges, we know that the original series diverges because the integral test tells us that these two things will always have the same behavior as long as as the series meets these first three criteria and therefore allows us to use the integral test in the first place. So let's tackle these first three criteria first. We have to show that this series is positive, decreasing, and continuous. So we'll start with positive. And oftentimes the easiest way to figure these three out is just to find the first couple terms and look at the trend that you see between them. So what this tells you here, this n equals 1 on the sum, this tells you that the series starts at n equals 1. So I'm going to plug 1 in for n, then I'm going to plug in 2, then 3, then 4, then 5, and those are the first few terms of this series. So if I plug in n equals 1, I'm going to get 1 squared, which is 1. 1 plus 1 is 2. 1 divided by 2 is 1 half. So the first term in the series is 1 half. The next term in the series is going to be the term at n equals 2. I plug in n equals 2. I get 2 squared, which is 4. 4 plus 1 is 5. 1 divided by 5 is 1 fifth. Then I'm going to plug in n equals 3. I'm going to get 9 plus 1 is 10. So I'm going to have 1 tenth. Then I'll plug in n equals 4. I'm going to get 16 plus 1, or 17. So I'm going to get 1 over 17. So you can see the pattern here. These are the first four terms of the series, and I could keep going. Now I want to look at these terms and say, can I use these terms to say whether or not the series is positive? And in fact, I can. I can see that the terms are getting smaller. 1 fifth is smaller than 1 half. 1 tenth is smaller than 1 fifth. 1 seventeenth is smaller than 1 tenth. But no matter how small they get, the terms are always going to be positive. There's no value of n I can plug in because my n values are always going to be positive. They're going to start at positive 1 and count up forever, positive 2, positive 3, positive 4. So I'm always going to plug in a positive value. And there's no value I can plug in for n that's going to make this term negative. Therefore, I can say that the terms in my series are always going to be positive, and therefore that the series itself will always be positive. Then decreasing. So if I look at my series here, I can see that 1 half is greater than 1 fifth. 1 fifth is greater than 1 tenth. 1 tenth is greater than 1 seventeenth. The numerator is always going to stay 1. The denominator is going to get larger and larger and larger, which means the fraction as a whole gets smaller and smaller and smaller. So every term is always going to be smaller than or less than the previous term. And when each term is less than the previous term, then I can say that my series is decreasing. So that one's taken care of as well. Now what about continuous? Well, basically I just want to show that there are no discontinuities in the domain of this series. And I know that that's true because since my series starts at n equals 1, and I count up n equals positive 1, positive 2, positive 3, positive 4, on into infinity, I'm always just going to have a positive number in the denominator of each term. I'm never going to be able to plug in a value for n that's going to make this denominator 0 and therefore result in a discontinuity of the function. There's no way I can make this function discontinuous, so I can say that the function is in fact continuous. 
Therefore, I can say a sub n, the series, is positive, decreasing, and continuous, so I know I can now use the integral test. So to use the integral test, what I want to do is I want to say a sub n is equal to f of x. So in other words, this value here, my series, that's a sub n. That's this value right here, a sub n. I want to set a sub n equal to f of x, and I just want to put it in here into this integral for f of x. The only thing I need to do, because my integral here is in terms of x variables, I just want to go ahead and change the n variable to an x variable, and then evaluate this integral. So I'm going to have the integral from 1 to infinity, and then f of x is going to be this function here, 1 over, but now instead of n, I want to say x. So I'm going to say x squared plus 1 dx. Now I need to evaluate this integral and figure out whether or not this integral converges or diverges. If it converges, then the original series will also converge. If it diverges, then the original series will also diverge. So to take the integral, what we need to realize is that this function here, 1 over x squared plus 1, is a special type of function, and this just happens to be this particular problem. But the integral of this quotient is arctan, or tan to the negative 1, of x. And this function actually comes up a lot in calculus, so it's helpful to know that this specific value, 1 divided by x squared plus 1, the integral of that function is arctan of x. So we're going to have arctan of x evaluated over the interval 1 to infinity. Now if I'm going to be technical about this, what I want to do is change this to the limit as b goes to infinity of arctan, or tan to the negative 1, of x evaluated over the interval 1 to b. And so then I would say the limit as b goes to infinity, and I actually could have done that before I took the integral, but I've got the limit as b goes to infinity evaluating over the interval. I plug in my upper limit of integration first, which is b. So I'm going to get arctan of b, and then minus whatever I get when I plug in my lower limit of integration 1. So I'm going to get minus arctan of 1. Now you can plug these values, arctan of infinity and arctan of 1, into your calculator, or you can do the math and use the unit circle. Remember, we'll just take arctan of 1 as an example here. If we say tan to the negative 1 of 1 is equal to x, and then we take tangent of both sides, so we're going to take tangent of the left side here, and then tangent of x, we get tangent and arctan to cancel, and we get 1 is equal to tangent of x. We'll remember that tangent is sine over cosine, so what we get is sine of x over cosine of x is equal to 1. And the only place where this happens on the unit circle, remember on the unit circle, sine represents the y value of each coordinate point, cosine represents the x value of each coordinate point. So really what we're looking for is y over x is equal to 1, or the point where y is equal to x. The only point where that happens on the unit circle is the angle pi over 4. So this arctan of 1 is pi over 4. You could also do that with arctan of infinity. We're taking the limit as b goes to infinity, so we're kind of plugging infinity in for b here. And if we did the same math here, what we'd get is y over x is equal to infinity instead of y over x is equal to 1. The closest we ever get on the unit circle to infinity, the largest value we ever obtain is at pi over 2. So what we're going to say is that arctan of b is pi over 2. So we end up with pi over 2 minus pi over 4. We can multiply both the numerator and denominator of this first fraction by 2 to get a common denominator. So we'll end up with 2 pi over 4 minus pi over 4. 2 pi minus pi is just pi, and then we have 4 in the denominator. So our answer then is pi over 4. What's important here is not the exact value of the result. What's important is whether or not you get a real number answer here or an infinite answer. So the fact that we got a real number, pi over 4 is a real number, it's a constant. The fact that we got a real number means that this original integral here converges. So a real number answer indicates that this converges. If we had found instead a result of infinity or negative infinity, that would indicate that this original integral was divergent. But because the value of this integral was a real number, that means the integral converges, and the integral test tells us that when this integral converges, the original series 
also converges. So we can say that this original series is convergent. Again, if we had found an infinite value here, that would mean that the integral was divergent, and we would say that the original integral was also divergent. So the last thing I'd say is, the key to knowing whether or not you should use the integral test is to look at this original series and see whether or not it's easy to integrate. Because remember, you're just going to take this function and plug it into an integral. Yes, we changed the variable from n to x, but we just evaluated this series as an integral. So if this original series is easy to integrate, and you know you can integrate it, then you might be able to find the value of this integral, so the integral test might be a good choice. Sometimes you're going to get a series that's impossible to integrate. If you imagine this series in an integral and you think to yourself, how would I ever take the integral of this series? The integral test might not be the test you're looking for. But if this looks easy to integrate, then you might want to try the integral test. And then you should go immediately to this positive decreasing continuous checklist. Because if this series is positive decreasing and continuous, then that's when you know you'll be able to use the integral test. And again, the result of the integral, all that matters is whether or not it's a real number answer, in which case this integral converges and so does the series or it's an infinite answer, in which case the integral diverges, and therefore so does the series.